This is the post activity video for the two different art analysis methods that we did because I have to leave class the last 10 minutes and you just got a lot of information thrown at you and you all probably did wonderful. I'm recording this before, so I don't know. Uh, let's see. So after you practice both method methods, uh, you are going to, starting right now, think about two artworks that you would want to choose to do this with. So you're going to end up being the teacher in your group, essentially. You're each going to get an opportunity to choose two artworks individually, not as a group. And then you will all spend time critiquing these artworks together and analyzing them together. We're going to do a month of this. It's a lot of talking about art. But my hope is that it will prepare you to go into the comparative study a lot easier. So you're going to choose these two artworks. I need them chosen by the end of class on Friday, okay? So you don't have to choose them today. I'd like you to start looking through some of my resources uh, today, uh, some of the art magazines especially, and the art books, um, my uh, presentation that I made of notable artists is on its way. It's not, there's not a lot in it right now, but there is some information in there, so I'll get to those resources a little bit later. So you'll be able to look through some stuff starting uh, tomorrow, you know, Wednesday, if you want to hop on there and just look through the resources, and then all day in class on Friday, you'll be able to look through my resources and make an informed decision about the two artworks that you're going to choose to research for your critical investigation. Then you'll research them. So you'll spend, uh, I think, a little over a week or maybe even longer. Uh, no, it is just a week. Okay, you're going to spend a week researching your two chosen artworks. So you'll spend one day researching one and then one day researching the other. That would be a fine use of time. And you're going to find three resources for each of those artworks. So you're going to be finding six resources and having to either watch videos or read excerpts from books. Uh, so this is a great time for you to get to know some of the resources that are out there. Then once you've researched these artworks a little bit and you know about your artwork, then you're going to bring it to the group and you're all going to look at your first artwork chosen with the analytical model. Then you're going to uh, decompress from that and you'll spend a day making your critical investigation slide with it. Then you could do the feminist model and then same thing the next class you'll work on your critical investigation slide and finishing up your, your layout. So you'll create a layout either in your process portfolio for the critical investigation slides and there's examples of it coming or in your sketchbook. Your choice. There's lots of examples coming. Here we go. So uh, right here, this is the information that you need for the library resources, all the logins. I have been using JSTOR a lot lately too, and along with Gale, of course, is a great resource. And I also I even ordered a Frida Kahlo book through the uh, Michigan Electronic Library to the MEL. Here's an example of how you could do a critical investigation in your process journal researching these artists, breaking their work down. Here's an example of a process portfolio. So the other ones were actually in someone's sketchbook, right? But this was in someone's process portfolio. And so they did it on here. They put the artist's work on there and they pointed out little parts and pieces of the artist's work and wrote about it. So this is what you're working toward. With all of this critiquing that you're get, getting, all the information, you're going to use that as your layout for your process portfolio slides. And I think it will be a lot more effective this time around. So this slide is super important. This is the, the slide that I was saying has places to start. So there are lots of, of uh, things on this slide that you can go to that will have plenty of information for you about different artists to choose from. So these four are just different articles that I pulled from uh, Gale and Britannica School. Uh, so those are all great resources. Those are direct from our library. We do have some great books in the library too, but unfortunately that's not an option right now, but they've got plenty of, of digital stuff too. Art 21. Lots of awesome artists on there, as well as if you're more into mixed media and crafts, Craft America, uh, Craft in America is, has a lot of good artists on there too. And this is a list of their artists. 
The next one here is my notable artist presentation, which is just a slideshow that I will throw artist photo names and uh, research at like, you know, resources for you to use. And then the last one here is my collection of scholastic magazines and books. And I really want you to look through that first and then look through all this other stuff because there are, are some great I usually, if we're in person, like to bring books so that you all can look through books and magazines in class and get ideas from artists from there. So that's why that's there. And I will go to this books and magazines collection. I'm actually still working on finishing sorting it, so none of these magazine pages will be there. They'll be sorted. But you'll also see paintings from artists along with the artist's information on there so that you can say, oh, I really like this painting. I'm going to look up this artist and, uh, and see what more information there is about them. Uh-oh, that one doesn't, the name got cut off. Uh, let's see, did the name get cut off on this one? Nope, that's on there. Okay, I'll have to find the name for that other one. But the name will be up in the top corner. So these are from my different books that I have. All right, y'all, lots to decompress from today. Look through some of these magazines here. If you open them up and look at the different pages, just look at the artwork. Don't worry about like reading it. Just look at the images and see if there's anything that sticks out to you that you really like. And then you could possibly use that as an option for your two art pieces that you'll need to have chosen by Friday. That's the only thing that I expect of you by the end of class on Friday after all I, this information I threw at you. During class on Friday, you're just going to be looking through my resources, trying to, to go down an art rabbit hole and find two artworks that you really like that you want to know more about. That's all I expect of you by Friday. If you have questions, feel free to email me. Uh, thoughts about the lesson as a whole today, you can email me too. And have an awesome day.